welcome to another video on logarithms. Hmm, so you see the numbers floating on the screen? How about we multiply and divide these numbers, but let's do so without the use of a calculator. Well, you might not want to do that endless task, right? And especially when we have a calculator to make our life easy, why would we do it with our hand? Absolutely correct. Don't worry, we are going to use calculators and we're going to make it even more easy on the calculator by using logarithmic properties. So on today's video, I will show you three properties of logarithms that are commonly found in Algebra 2 math problems and sometimes even pre-calculus. Now, even middle school students who are learning a little higher level of math could utilize the concept of logarithms. It's that easy because when John Napier was working hmm. on these properties, he actually made these multiplications of massive astronomical digits, multiplication and division meaning, into a simple game of addition and subtraction. Imagine you have large digits of numbers and all you have to do is add and subtract, and that too on a calculator. Well, our job and life has become very easy because of that. So you just need three simple steps. And if you want to know what these properties are and how we're going to solve the problems in three simple steps, stay around and I will see you around. All right. So the three steps that I mentioned in the introduction are going to be first, we identify the property for the logarithm. Step number two, we utilize the result for that property to solve the expression or the equation given to us. And step number three, Either you have the answer or you key it into the calculator to get your answer. Easy breezy, three steps, all right? So now on your screen, you're going to see the properties that I'm going to write. So the first one is going to be a product uh, rule or, and usually it is also called as an addition identity of logarithms. So it is going to be, uh, let's say there's a log to the base B of two numbers X, and y and if they are to be multiplied then it is going to be log to the base b of x plus log to the base b of y this is one particular property which is called the product rule please also note that these two numbers if you have to add which translates to multiplication and vice versa is only valid when the three bases in the three areas are the same so you have to have the same base Second property is the division property or the quotient rule when there is a fraction. So let's say x over y is some fraction and it is going to be log to the base b of x minus log to the base b of y, meaning the numerator minus the denominator, both in logarithms. But again, please do note this is going to be the same base. Identity number three is the power rule or the property is a power rule which is given by, let's say you're finding the logarithm to a number which has an exponent. So that gets written out as m times log to that base b of that number a and that's it. All right, so let's solve some examples. And as you can see on the screen, I have written the basic uh, formula for the logarithms as a refresher. So if there is a log to the base b of a number a, and the answer to that is x, what we are trying to say in exponential form is to what power should we raise the base number b power x to get a? So those questions I put on one and two, so that so that we can review what we have just learned. So if it is log to the base two of 64, basically the question is asking, what power should the base number be raised to so we get 64? And I know this will be six because two power six gives us 64. Same way, what power will seven be raised to to give us 343? And that's gonna be seven cubed, which is 343. So the answer is gonna, going to be three. Now, there are two different kinds of questions that you will see on basic logarithm properties, meaning the basic application of these properties, which is an expansion question and a condensation question. So meaning a question type that will ask you to expand, meaning they'll give you the property like an example number three, four example is seven times nine. So meaning like this, this is this kind of a question is going to ask you to expand. 
Similarly, the next example that already has given the expanded form, the question will say, evaluate, simplify, and write it in a condensed form. So similarly, these are direct application of properties and pretty much very straightforward questions. So as you can see, log seven times nine, it is log seven plus log nine. We identified the property as product rule or additive identity, and we have written the answer, right? So what did I say at the beginning? Uh, or initially, I told you that we just need three steps. Identify the property, use the result for that property to simplify the expression, and you have your answer in step three. Similarly, next example is the expanded form given to us. So we will just write it in condensed form, which we know. But when any logarithmic question is given in an expanded notation, please take note of the base. Here, the base is 10. Now, there's another key idea here before I get to the answer. If the word log is written without any base number, it's just log, it means it is base 10, which commonly is the logarithmic button that you see on your calculators as well. It's all on base 10. If it is any other base different from 10, then you will see numbers written like 2, 3, 4, or several examples that you may have come across. So coming back to this example, log 5 plus log 3 in expanded notation, and we will have log 5 times 3, which is going to be log 15. And again, the property utilized is the product rule. Next example is, of course, as you will see, is a quotient rule. It is a fraction, log 4 over 7, and it will be written as whatever is the numerator, log of the numerator minus the log of the denominator. And again, this is in condensed form. So the question might say, write it in expanded notation. So let's see some more examples. Next example here gives us, since there is a minus sign, we can identify the property as a quotient rule, meaning we will have a fraction in condensed form. And also recognize the base is 10 for both the, pro uh, both the terms. So this makes it easy. Log 100 over 3 will be the answer. Next example here utilizes power rule and quotient rule. So this is given, us, given to us in condensed form. We will write in expanded notation. All we have to do is after we identify the property, step by step we take care of it. So you will take the power in front of log, 2 log, 5, and minus log 6. Please note this 2 is multiplied. It applies to the entire fraction. It's not just either one numerator. It is not like 5 squared over 6. If it was log 5 squared over 6, then we will write that as 2 log 5 minus log 6. But in this case, the number 2 or the power 2 is the power to both 5 and 6. So please be careful with those kind of notations. Next example right here, what we have is 1 third log of 9. Again, this is power rule, a direct application of the property. So all you have to do is take the power right here and rewrite the log as log 9 to the power of 1 over 3. And that's pretty much a very straightforward application of all these, uh, you know, logarithmic properties. Now the next two examples that I have actually I have already solved them. So I let just go over with you go over the answers right here. The question says log to the base 5 x y z cube. Now let's identify the property first. This is a product property. Directly we are talking about multiplication, but there's also a power rule here, right? Because z has a power of cube. So this is straightforward expansion question. So we just take log to the base 5, separate each of the terms, log 5x plus log to the base 5 of y plus log to the base 5 of z cube. And z cube can further be written as 3 log to the base 5 of z. Similarly, next problem, again, there is a combination of properties here. One here, there's a number written in front of the log means this can be taken as the power. So a power 6 in the next step, same thing here for the second term. Uh, 4 will be taken as a power for the variable b, which is it already has a power of 5, but we multiply it with 4. So it becomes 20, all right? 
Also note that both the terms have the same base 4. So these properties essentially will apply when the different terms of logarithms have the same base. A very important idea. We have to have the same base. Okay. Anyway, let's get back to the question. So a power 6, this becomes a power 6 right here. This will become b power 20. And we see a minus sign in between. So when there's a minus sign in between terms, we know that's going to be a quotient rule. And hence the answer becomes log to the base 4 of a power 6 divided by b over 20. All right. That's the answer. So that's uh, about it. And uh, hopefully you have um, followed. Please do let me know if you want me to do any more complex problems or feel free to connect with me. Information as usual has been provided. All right. Bye-bye. Take care.